what's up guys I'm anxiety disorder and they uh, recently they released a few more spoilers for whispers of the old gods and I wanted to talk about them uh, the ones that I won't be talking about are the you know the ones from my last video which are you know the, the six that they announced earlier you know beckoner of evil twilight elder uh, polluted hoarder, um, corrupted minibot, validated doomsayer, Cthun, and I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. I won't be talking about them because I've already done that, but without further ado, I'm going to talk about the next ones in like that they've released, starting at the neutral cards, going and then at the common level, and then moving up from there. So onwards we go with number one uh, the first one which is tentacles of Nozoth uh, I say Nozoth with a question mark because I'm sure that's how you say it but I really not sure but it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 that deals 1 damage to all minions when it dies that's, that's okay uh, the, what this basically says is that Maybe Nozoth will also be in this, and he'll have something to do with, like, his... Because Cthun's whole thing is that he gets buffed by his minions. So maybe Nozoth has a thing where he, like, brings back his minions or something, because it's a death rattle card, which means that it's possible that the rest of the Nozoth cards will also have death rattle, and then you could play uh, Nozoth to bring back or play a bunch of those death rattle cards which I think would be kinda cool if that's the thing other than that it just really that says nothing it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 which is terrible I mean Wisp is a 1-1 one, one for 0 and this only does 1 damage to everything on board I don't know if it's good I doubt it I mean, it might be good in a, like a Nozoth theme deck but we we haven't seen anything other than this tentacle about Nozoth so who knows Moving on, we have another Cthun card, Cthun's Chosen. Cthun's Chosen is a 4-2 four, for 4 with Divine Shield, which right there is kind of like, meh, we're like, I don't know how to feel about it because normally when we play uh, for Divine Shield, we also get something else with it, which we do. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it gives Cthun 2-2, two, two, wherever it is. But, at the same, and it's a 4-2, so it's good, but it's also not good, because, I don't know. It's it's kind of like in this gray area where it's decent, in the Cthun deck, obviously. But outside of that, it won't get played at all. But, in the Cthun deck, where it will obviously be, because it is very good for a Cthun deck is that it basically two for one's your opponent like your opponent has to give up two cards just to play the or just to beat this thing or has to give up two attacks or has to you know he has to expend a lot more resources than if it was just a four two for four without divine shield and it give Cthun. so I, I like it but at the same time I don't like it it's just this weird gray area where but it does show, it's just, uh, going back to it, uh, it's a weird gray area where it's good, but it's also bad. But it does also show that they're really developing the Cthun cards to be strictly for the Cthun deck only. Where, where other cards could maybe make some weird, interesting archetypes where they go other places and have Cthun as like just a game ender card these cards are just kinda like eh, they won't be good unless you have Cthun. Moving on the next one is another turned minion from the past into a weird creature the infested Tauren which is the, uh, the Tauren with taunt I don't remember his name but he's a 2-3 for 4 here uh, it has taunt and death rattle summon a 2-2 two -two slime I'm assuming that that 2 2 slime is not, does not have taunt, because the 1 2 slime has taunt. And if the Noxramus, um, Noxramus, uh, adventure mode 
is anything to say about what slimes can do and what slimes will be, I'm pretty sure this slime will only be a tutu. Just that's it, a vanilla, vanilla tutu. And this guy's bad. Four mana for a two three with taunt and summons a two two slime is a uh, that's just bad to be honest. But at the same time, they're like, this is the closest thing you're gonna get to Sludge Belcher in this pack. This set is okay with me. They're like, yeah, um, Sludge Belcher was too good. We understand that. We're gonna we're gonna notch it, like move it back a bit. We're gonna cut a full one two off of Sludge Belcher. Give you still the death rattle that makes the slime. Give the slime an additional attack. Remove its taunt completely, and then shift its mana source back one. That's a fair sludge belt. I really think that's what this guy is. Is they were like, how could we make sludge belcher fair? And then they made this guy, and they were like, well, it's kind of gotta have to be like someone. And they were like, I'll oh, just make it one of the torrents that no one plays. It'll be fine. Moving on to the rares, only one other one was spoiled other than Corrupted Minibot, and I really like this one. It's much better than, uh, I forget her name, but it's the card he's basically replacing. But the card is the Eater of Secrets, which is a pretty sweet name, and pretty sweet art, honestly. It's like all tentacle-y and stuff, but um, it's a 4-mana 2-4. That has the battle cry destroying in destroy all enemies secrets gain one one. This is an amazing card. Uh, I forget her name, but it's the uh, four mana four two that steals one of your opponent's secrets when she comes into play. I r she's bad in my opinion, like, but she's the only thing that can take care of secrets right now. So like other than flare, but you have to play a hunter to you know take care of flare. To use flare where she's a neutral card uh, this guy is just a strictly better version of her in my opinion he survives on board if your opponent only has one or two secrets and he still is threatening plus this is like a hard counter to the most annoying deck in the meta right now which is the secret paladin uh, most of the time I Though I think this guy will only be something like a 3 5 or a 4 6, but in those rare occasions where you play against the Secret Paladin and he just drops the uh, Mysterious Challenger and goes all tr Christmas tree and has all five secrets up there, you eat that and you become a 7 9. That's really hard for someone to deal with. And you remove all of his secrets, which is also amazing. See, Eater of Souls or Secrets will easily be a one of in every meta deck if secrets still are a thing in this new meta. Moving on to the next legendary that they have spoiled for the neutral cards. <sighs> Hogger Doom of Ilwin or Elwin? Whatever. I can't say his name, but I sigh at the beginning of this card because it's just trash. 7 mana 6-6. Six, six. That has the ability, when it takes damage, summon a 2-2 two, two, null with taunt. That's just bad. 7 mana 6-6. Six, six. We, we just got off a set where 7 mana legendaries got us 2 boom bots and was a 7-7. Seven, seven. So, yeah, there's no way Hogger is going to fill that role. Honestly, if he had Taunt as well, this would be a lot more like, yeah, this is a good card, but then he'd be overpowered. At the same time, this, the only place I could see this card going is like a warrior deck. Mainly because the warriors do, you know, Whirlwind and that, and uh, what are those called? Like, they have so many different, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but they have so many cards that injure their own minions to give them buffs, where he would fit in perfectly fine. Like, he's easily a replacement in Control Warrior for uh, Dr. Boom. He's easily. But the problem is, he doesn't fit anywhere else. They were, like, strictly making this card for Warrior, it seems like. Because there's no way to benefit from his ability in the other classes. And because of that, I really think this card is kind of trash. 
obviously in arena if you still pick him up though if you're lucky enough to get him though you're kind of ahead of your opponents but at the same time he's just bad and I'm kind of sad because I'd rather have the other hogger even though his stats are like less he at least put the nulls out every turn not just if he happens to take damage which no one's gonna let you just paint like trade this guy into like multiple cards it's the same reason that uh imp mob boss is always just like ignored until they can just straight up kill it one one shot or the um uh what's his, the acolyte of pain is also straight up annoyed until or ignored until you can kill it in one shot so to be honest hogger is not that good of a card and i really wish they would have done something a little bit better with him because he's kind of cool like the artwork's sweet though i can't wait to see one of those golden and then disenchant it for a better legendary Moving on to the class specifics, we see, saw a Druid card, and I'm going to apologize now because I have no idea how to say this first name or first word. Uh, Kalixi, Kalixi, Kalixi. I think it's Kalixi. I don't know. Kalixi Amber Weaver. This is heralding of a new Druid deck. I will tell you that it's a four mana, four five. That has the battle cry. If Kathun has at least ten attack gain five health now before I go into this I have one question does it mean if Kathun has 10 attack anywhere because if that matter if that's the stipulation this cards godly if it's just Kathun has to be on the board with 10 attack then it's not as good I would assume it's if he has 10 attack and he's anywhere because it's a four mana card. I don't think you would want to be, you know, waiting till turn, say, 11 to play this guy. This guy is something you want to play on turn four and get super ahead of your opponents. So I would assume that it is anywhere. If that's the case, that just shows that because there's, I'm guessing it's like a cycle of them. Each one of them is going to have a card that says battle battle cry if Kathun has 10 or more or at least 10 attack do something this one's really good though because a 410 is just really brutal on turn 4 which from what they've released so far seems kind of possible like especially if you on if you go second and you get the coin because then it's just your your opponents are kind of screwed if you have the god hand I really do see a style of druid deck where it's Kathun um, aggro, maybe, because this guy would be like at 410, and then you only play Kathun as like a finisher. Because, and this is extremely possible for Kathun to be at 10 attack in the druid deck, especially since you have Innervates and um, uh, what is it, that weird druid card that's like a 2 3 that gives you a mana crystal when it enters the battlefield. I forget his name. But other than that, like this guy is just really good. The sweet it's sweet art. It's like an insect man. And its stat line, even if you don't have Kathun at ten, is not too bad for a uh for a druid card, to be honest. <laughs> Moving on, at number eight or why did I say number eight? Mainly because this is an eight eight for eight. Um anyways. <laughs> It's called the Giant Sandworm, which is an 8-8 eight, eight for 8, as you can see. If this minion, minion attacks another minion and kills it, it can attack again. This ability is sweet on this card. It's really cool. Like, I like it a lot. The ability to just basically wipe your opponent's board with this one card is neat. I don't know if it's worth 8 mana. Like... It is, in a way, because it is an 8-8, eight, eight, which is what we're willing to pay for 8-8s eight, 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 is 8 mana. This ability is pretty cool. Um, the dream is, you know, playing any of those cards that is like, give your beast immunity. That's the dream with this card. <laughs> because then you can, you know, wipe your entire your opponent's entire board and then hit him in the face with it. That's pretty sweet. Uh, the only problem is it's in Hunter, which means that 
you know, you're not going to get anything out of this because Face Hunter is kind of where they're at. There's Face Hunter, Mid Range Hunter, and Hybrid Hunter. There is no Control Hunter, and that's where this would kind of go into a control style like late game deck. This card is not for that. Their high end is Savannah High Main at best, which is a six mana card. Two mana under where this wants to be. I really don't see this getting played. It's a really cool card, and I'd love to brew with it. Other than that, it's just not going to go into the meta. <laughs> Moving on to the mage, we get actually our first look at, I guess, what you would call a new mechanic, air quotes, because it's just a forbidden typing in the card name, so it's not really a mechanic, but it's pretty interesting nonetheless, which is Forbidden Flames for zero mana. Spend all your mana, deal that much damage to a minion. The fact that they have to specify minion is very good here because otherwise this would be the most broken card ever. It would just be another pyro bomb or pyro blast in the deck, which would be stupid. But anyways, <laughs> I really like this card. It looks cool. First off, the dude, you know, just rattling the flames and stuff like that. Anyways, um also the fact that it is so flexible is very good it's good early game it's good late game this card is just good there's no way around it mages always get the best toys this one is probably one of the best forbidden cards they've shown so far it's really neat and I really do see this going in at least one of these going in every deck from now to the end of time <laughs> or at least until it's out of standard moving on to paladin we've seen another forbidden card forbidden healing zero mana again spend all your mana heal double that amount that is really good to be honest early game not so good you know one two mana you're getting what a two or four heal not very good but I foresee this being in the Reno in a Reno Paladin deck now why do I say that mainly because it has the same effect as Reno in a way it because uh, the whole point of the Reno deck is you play a bunch of cards that are similar but not exactly the same to get you know better results in the deck because you know Reno's ability heals you to full if you have only like you know if you have only one of each card in your deck which is you know pretty good but at the same time that's really inconsistent unless you have cards that are basically copies of each other this card would be a, another copy of Reno basically meaning that this card would really fill out a perfect Reno deck so it's obviously going straight into Reno and I can see it going into like Secret Paladin as well, mainly be like any of the Paladin meta decks really, but Secret Paladin as well, mainly because you could play this right after dropping a uh, like um right what is the word I'm 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 losing the name of the card, uh Mysterious Challenger like it's turn ten you play Mysterious Challenger and you're trying to stabilize, play this, you get eight health back. It's like a mini bot, but cheaper. So yeah, I really do like this card. It's really cool looking art too. I'd love to see it in gold. It it would probably be super sweet in gold. Um, other than that, I think it's gonna be a staple in meta in the meta for a while for paladins. At least one of in every deck. <laughs> Moving on, another paladin card. This time a common. Uh, it is called Stand Against Darkness, which is uh, five mana, summon five one one silver hand recruits. Unless we're getting more silver hand recruit um, support, I don't really see this card being that, that good. Um, five mana for five of them it seems legit, kind of. It's like not on par because uh, I forget the other one, but it, the one that's leaving standard muster for battle, I think it is. Where it summons three one ones and gives you a, a weapon. Yeah, uh, it's just not that to be honest. For three mana, summon three one ones and a weapon. If this was five mana, 
get five one ones and a weapon, then it'd be overpowered, obviously. But that's kind of what we're willing to see these cards at is the same amount of recruits as mana and a weapon. <laughs> and but like I said, unless you go for like a silver hand recruit army, I don't really see this being very good. We we'd have to see a lot more support for these guys than just the quartermaster, to be honest. Moving on to Priest, we get another Forbidden spell. Um, the Forbidden Shaping. Spend all your mana, for ma zero mana again, spend all your mana, summon a random minion that costs that much. Eh? I don't know how to feel about this. Because, like, playing this early game, you're gonna gamble with, like, low level minions that some are good, some are bad. I don't want to see anything like a, you know, I don't want to see anything like a Doomsayer at turn two or anything like that. But at the same time, it's like play it late game and you get a little bit better things, but you also have a huge, you know, problem of eating all your mana into a random gamble. I'm never a fan of RNG, so it's kind of like, Oh man, I don't know, kind of thing. Like it would be fun in like the straight up RNG deck where you just like play a bunch of uh, those uh, what are they called? The things that steal cards from your opponent's deck and puts them into your hand, and getting a bunch of discovery cards and stuff like that, and making this really funny. Um, man, just had a cough. Um, summoning a bunch of, like, just doing a big, you know, RNG style deck would be funny, but it wouldn't be good. And that card kind of fits there, and then maybe one or two, or, yeah, maybe one in every one of the priest decks might be good. You obviously would want to play this somewhere between level six and, or, or number six mana, couldn't say that word and nine mana I would say somewhere in that range uh, not at nine mana because I don't think there's very many cards that cost nine mana that are good but it's but you know it depends and also the dream is just pay ten mana and get a free uh, Deathwing you know or Cthun but neither of them would you know proc their battle cries so who knows next at number six is Harold Vol Volges? Vol Vol I'm sorry. So bad for people who know how to pronounce this name. I'm really sorry. But it's a 6 mana 5-5 five, five with the battle cry. Summon a 1-1 one, one copy of each of your other minions. This one's uh weird. I don't know how to feel about this, to be honest. Like, you would all... Because it's summoning a 1-1 one, one of the copy of each other minion. Meaning that anything with battle cry is useless. So And it removes all the stats of the card. So it's kind of also useless. So it would have to have a really good like onboard effect or death rattle. For this to be a really good card. And I could see some people brewing with this. But I don't think I see anyone playing this in a meta deck. Like maybe <laughs> this guy's one of the weird ones that I'm like this is an interesting legendary but that's it it's interesting there's no there's no uh like instant value from this guy he's in he's he's cool though I could maybe see him as like because it does summon copies of your other minions one ones making him like a pseudo doctor boom kind of like thing where you have uh what's his name the leper gnome and you just play this guy and then he copies a leper gnome so you're essentially just dr boom but you can only hit your opponent in face with the boom bots i don't know he could be cool he could be bad i don't know just had to see the meta fan out i do want to brew with him though he'd be fun moving on uh rogue got no spoiled cards of course rogue gets nothing it's because they're all sneaky and stuff. But Shamans got a Legendary spoiled. And I apologize right now for this 
name butchering that I'm about to do. Halrizil, 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 the Ascended. It's a five mana four six legendary. Uh, already looks pretty sweet just by the card art, but whenever a spell deals damage, restore that much health to your hero. Uh, this is just really backing the uh, shaman like spell deck. You know, this plus, uh, what's his name, Mal Mal Malganus? Not Malganus, is it Malganus? The, the dragon that gives you, like, five spell power or four sp spell power or whatever. This card would go straight into that deck. Sadly, Crackle's gone, so you're losing a bit of your, you know, heal and damage. But it's, otherwise, it's a pretty good card, in my opinion. It's, it's solid for five mana. It, it survives board for a while, because it's six because of its six health and then its damage is not to laugh at four ma or four damage trades with a lot of things it doesn't trade with yetis but it does trade with a lot of things so moving on from that one we go to the warlock my favorite class and they've only spoiled one card which is doom which is destroy all minions draw a card for each I don't know how to feel about this because no one plays tri Twisted Nether, and I always thought Twisted Nether was good. And it was for eight mana, destroy all minions. This one is destroy all minions for ten mana, but you draw a card for each card, in, like that you destroyed. That could be good. That could be bad. Like you will always obviously it's a ten mana card, so it's like your entire turn on turn ten or later. So, I see maybe one of these getting ran, if any. Like, as, you know, this would easily be a Reno, de uh, Reno lock card. Easily. But the problem with it, I see, is, like, holding it in your hands for so long. Uh, you know, trying to get the most value out of it, and no one committing anything to the board after, like, too much to the board after turn 10 against a Warlock just for the fear of this card. Mainly, like, how people don't commit enough to the board when you want Flame Strike. This could be even worse, because this also puts you back in the game if you can wipe their entire board and draw, say, 7 cards. But also, at the same time, it also kills all your stuff, too, and allows you to draw there, too. So a death rattle style deck would be kind of interesting, like with this, just a bunch of death rattles that are still in standard. I don't know how many of the good ones are still in standard because you know you lost all the shredders and stuff like that. But you play a bunch of death rattles. You on turn ten you just doom everything, wipe the entire board, draw a bunch of more cards. Your death rattles trigger whatever they are, and get a you know another decent board plus do whatever else other than that I don't know it's it it's sweet art I want two of them in gold because it looks so cool I don't know if I'll ever play it though it's the same with twisted nether it's kinda like I like them but it's just everyone's like it's not mana efficient it's fair going on to warrior they got two spoiled cards. We'll talk about the pirate first. Nazoth's first mate. Nazoth's first mate. That was really hard to say, actually. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1, and I think that might be a, a, a theme for Nazoth, is that it's 1-1s one, for, you know, 1. But this one has a decent effect. Battlecry equipped a 1-3 rusty hook. All right. And it's not a bad card. It's not a good card, but it's not a bad card. The only problem with it is the fact that uh, if Nazoth's thing is 1-1s, one um, why'd they put this card in Warrior, not Rogue? Because Warrior has like Whirlwind and a bunch of other cards that cleave the entire board for one damage everywhere. So if Nazoth's thing is 1-1s, one He'd be wiping his board a lot. Other than that, I think the card's cool. Maybe, uh, maybe people can you know try the warrior pirate deck again, like 
mainly because you see it like when the game first started and then it never shows back up because Rogue was just a better pirate deck. Here, this kind of is like maybe warrior pirate? Who knows? But moving on. <sighs> this is another side card because not because it's bad, because it's too good in my opinion. The ancient shield breaker. Seven mana six six. <laughs> Shield bearer, my bad. Not breaker, by the way. Um, it is seven mana six six with battle cry. If Cthun has ten or more attack, or ten, has at least ten attack, is the best way to put it, I guess. Gain ten armor. This is just another shield bearer in the because it's at turn seven, so it's guaranteed if you're building a Cthun deck it's guaranteed to have 10 attack so it's guaranteed by turn 7 to have 10 attack in my opinion if you're building a Cthun deck so this is just another shield bearer but it gives double the freaking armor for better stats a 5 mana 5-5 five five that gives you 5 armor and then this one's a 7 mana 6-6 six six that gives you armor this is just too good in my opinion like Factoring in that Cthun could be on like 10 attack on turn 4, really, this is just broken in my opinion. I want to see this not cost so less, or not give 10 armor. It's so frustrating. Warriors didn't need help, in my opinion, right now for being a good deck. It's good, obviously. It's going to be played in the meta, obviously. A Cthun, uh, control warrior is going to be a thing I guarantee you it this is going to be one of the cards leading the helm of that freaking deck it's going to be good all the Cthun stuff is great value in the Cthun deck so a, a deck full of Cthun great value cards plus control aspects blows out obviously this is like the first go to deck for anyone who has all the cards but yeah, that's the uh, that's the spoilers as of right now. Um, a lot of these cards are really cool. A lot of them are really frustrating sometimes. Um, overall, that was that's basically the whisper of the old gods in in detail. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'm anxiety disorder, and uh, see you later.